Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the differences between PCR testing and rapid antigen testing for COVID. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Han. I love to produce review videos on different online courses and share information regarding health and other science topics. I also like to share learning tips and tricks for students' professional and personal development. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you have already subscribed, thank you for coming back. All right, guys, here today I am here going for a swab test for COVID-19. And actually, I'm at a chain retail, um, at a chain retail pharmacy, drive through. Right, so I have to stop you there. I'm going to give you a vial and a swab. The first thing I want you to do is turn this swab in the middle until it breaks. Take the vial in the face, please, and you'll be happy at it, okay? Okay. Alright, so you've just seen a little vlog of myself getting a COVID test at the drive through at a Rite Aid pharmacy essentially. And with school starting very soon in a couple of weeks, you know, there are a lot of buzzword or buzz news around getting testing for COVID. Now, well, there are several different type of testing. Some are testing antibody, indicating if you had infections or not. And there are some molecular or antigen tests these days available for looking at if you have a presence or active presence of the virus inside your respiratory tract. Now in today's video, we are going to look at the differences between the antigen test and the PCR test that I just had. Okay, guys, so we are going to look at the topic on what is or what are those rapid tests for COVID and in comparison to the standard or more established PCR testing. So first of all, there's a disclaimer. This video is my uh, interpretations and summary of publicly available resources that you can find on the internet. And I make no claims on diagnosing, uh, preventions, and treatment of any disease that I mentioned in my videos. I me I'll mention some commercial products in the video and I receive no ties and I have no uh, commercial linkage with those products and company. Alright, so what is PCR testing for COVID? So basically, like I said before, it is a molecular test. So there are currently 168 tests approved by the FDA for emergency use. Now it is used to detect SARS-CoV-2 specific genetic material. Uh, it utilizes a standard laboratory technique called the polymerase chain reaction, therefore uh, the abbreviation PCR. So let's look at how it worked in a nutshell. So for a PCR test, uh, usually it starts with a swab of collecting sample from your nose. Now it can also be done at your throat, okay? Now after that, you get your viruses and what specifically we are looking at the genetic material of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, okay? Usually we are only looking at a specific small uh, portion in their uh, RNA that is a specific that can tell it is the SARS-CoV-2. And we'll go into a machine, okay? This is so-called a PCR machine or thermocycler, which happens in a lab and what happened inside the machine is you have a collected viral RNA going through some enzymatic reactions turning into a copy of the DNA and then this copy of DNA will be amplified with this polymerase chain reaction that you know going from one to two basically from one copy to a double stranded DNA and then therefore and then from two to four basically it's a exponential increase in the amount of the original genetic material so this is very sensitive you only need to start with a very small amount of viral DNA you can get a detection at the end now here I'm going to show a uh, video that is kind of like what you would see in a lab. Actually, that's a standard procedure that I sometimes do in my own lab.
All right, so after seeing that little workflow here, hopefully you get a little bit um, better image or you can imagine what happened inside the lab for all these PCR tests. Well, the main advantage is very sensitive. Okay, that's pretty much the gold standard for these type of testing. Now, the disadvantage, be, uh, you know, comes to the speed. Now, depending on the specific product, uh, some could be giving you a result within a couple minutes. Those are relatively expensive actually the White House adapted one of those products but many other testing kits require a little bit more uh, technician manipulations and it takes some time for the results to be produced so it could range to a couple of days I didn't get my result until two to three days after I went for the swab so there are 168 testing kits already available what is new in this area. So very recently, the CDC of United States, okay, developed a multiplex assay, which can basically is the same principle doing PCR, but it can tell the differences between influenza A, B, and SARS-CoV-2. Now this assay is going to be very useful, especially when we are moving to a cooler season in a few months and starting to have flu cases popping up as well. Now let's look at the next category of testing, which is the antigen test. Now what is antigen test? Basically it looks for a specific a marker or usually it's some type of a protein that is unique to a particular organism in this case our SARS-CoV-2. Now currently there are two tests approved by the FDA that are considered antigen tests. So what is the antigen? So here I have a, a picture illustration showing you the uh, outside and the inside of the SARS-CoV-2 and you have that squiggly line is the genetic material and I pointed out uh, the antigen for both of these uh, antigen tests is looking at the nucleocapsid protein basically is a protein that kind of enveloped uh, you know engulf or kind of surrounding the genetic material uh, for SARS-CoV-2. So there are currently two different antigen tests for COVID. The first one is called SOFIA. Okay, that name is kind of uh, beautiful in my opinion. So it's a SOFIA SARS antigen fluorescent immunoassay, so L in abbreviation FIA. So it takes a nasal or nasal pharyngeal swab, basically collecting the sample in a very similar fashion as for the PCR test. But it requires a fluorescent reader to read the result. And the second one that is available that is approved more recently is called the BD Van Ritter system for rapid detection of SARS-CoV-2. Now it also takes a nasal swab and it is a chromatographic digital assay. Now this assay also requires a specific machine for the readout. And let's look at how it works in a nutshell again. So you start with a sample collection inside your throat and your nose and you get your uh, viruses, okay? Now this time you are mixing the viruses or sample uh, also with your, uh, it's a, some type of a buffer that comes with the kit. Now and after mixing uh, in this, you will put a drop inside a flow strip, okay? Actually it's a strip that has a uh, collection of sample and then also there is a some type of a, a paper-like material that coated with a specific antibody that can bind to our antigens. So this is essentially there is an antibody binding to the nucleocalypsid of the uh, virus, okay? Now after that, you would need a machine, basically you pop your specific strip okay, into the uh, corresponding machine that is uh, made to read this strip and usually the readout are pretty straightforward, it will tell you if there is a positive or negative. So what are the pros and cons of antigen tests? The pros is definitely the speed, okay? Both of those tests claim to have the result 
within 15 minutes. So, so that is you know very quick. You can get the result right away, and it is relatively low cost. It doesn't require a specific personnel to produce these uh, results. All you need is just to collect the sample, put it in the strip, put it in. So there's no PCR reactions and very minimum liquid mixing in the process. However, the main disadvantage is that although they are very specific for the SARS-CoV-2 virus, but they are less sensitive compared to the PCR or molecular test. So the chances of false negative could be higher. So i.e. they are, you know, maybe you are infected, but they tell it, they t they're telling you you are not infected. So there are these disadvantage there. So what is the take home message from today's video? Basically, uh, both molecular tests and antigen tests are used to detect the presence, the active presence of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, and the molecular test or the PCR are more sensitive but slower to get the result, okay? Now, as of the today or as of the day that I produced this video, there are a total of 168 products available in this category. And the antigen test, i.e. using some type of a strip, okay, the downside is less sensitive, good side is very fast, and can get the result within 15 minutes. Currently, there are two products in this category. Now to learn more, there are links from the FDA, CDC, and also links from both of the rapid test manufacturer. You can check it out. So hopefully you've learned something from today's video, knowing the differences between the PCR test and the rapid antigen test for COVID. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and also please feel free to use the comment down below to have a little discussion with me and ask me some questions. I'll do my best to answer uh, your, the questions for the topic. That's all for this week's COVID-19 update and I'll see you again next Sunday. Bye.